Good morning, all, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. First, let me thank uh, John Andrews for uh, his kind words and the great cooperation we've been having over the years. I, I beg to differ on the point that I'm the most more distinguished of the two. I've been, we've been here together for, as you say, something like eight years doing these, and uh, I've always been trying to emulate John and his capacity to lead these discussions. So let's see if I manage this year to come closer to your talent. <laughs> uh, so it's my honor to welcome you to the significant gathering where we come together to address the complex and evolving landscape of sustainability. I'm here as co-chair of the SDSN Greece, Sustainable Development Solution Network Greece, which has partnered with The Economist over the last eight years in um, uh, essentially preparing and uh, hosting these uh, talks. Uh, as John said, it's the eighth summit, and I want to thank The Economist for a wonderful and very sustainable cooperation. Thanks to the ministers and the distinguished speakers here. Very warm thanks to Nektaria Pasarivaiki, uh, who is the heart of the organizational success of, of these events. Um, and of course, a special thanks to all the sponsors. Um, a few brief words about the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. It was launched by the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and Jeffrey Sachs in 2012. So before the 2015 SDG goals were set. And of course, Jeffrey Sachs has, has played an important role in, in the development of, of the sustainability agenda. Um, the objective of the network is essentially to bring the knowledge of the academic institutions uh, to connect them with the business community, the civil society, and governance at both local uh, and national and regional level in order to essentially provide practical solutions, knowledge-driven solutions to address the very complex sustainability issues we face. Um, SDSN Greece, which is a national network, part of the global network, uh, is seven years old. And many of the themes that we're, we've been discussing here uh, and we'll be discussing today are part of both the research and educational themes of SDSN Greece. Today, our discussions are more urgent than ever as we navigate a world where the sustainability agenda is increasingly under threat from political, economic, and environmental pressures. This conference provides a vital platform, platform for redefining leadership, bridging divides, and setting a renewed course for sustainable development. Our overarching theme centers on the urgent need to reinvest, to reinvent, essentially, green leadership. Over the past decade, we have seen impressive strides in renewable energy, circular economies, and corporate sustainability commitments. So that's part of the positive picture that we have. Yes, um, yet those gains have been fragmented with many initiatives limited to individual regions or corporations and without a broader plan to link the several strands together. The growing geopolitical divisions we see today threaten to undermine collective climate action. Consider the EU's recent struggles to pass key environmental policies. The debate over the nature restoration law, which aims to restore damaged ecosystems across the continent, saw fierce resistance from member states fearing, fearing the loss of agricultural output and economic stability. The law barely passed with critics arguing that sustainability goals are being sacrificed at the altar of economic competitiveness. This situation exemplifies the challenge how can we ensure that national policies support rather than undermine collective sustainable objectives? Now, the fragmentation of the international order is having a profound, profound impact on global sustainability goals. 
Rising tensions between major powers, such as the US and China, are creating new barriers to international cooperation and climate action. Global tensions and lack of consensus have set back progress on the sustainability development goals. As again, John indicated, a, a 2024 UN report highlighted that only 17% of the SDG targets are on track to be met by 2030. With many goals, particularly those related to poverty, gender equality, and climate action, regressing instead of progressing. The growing economic divide has exacerbated these issues. For the first time in decades, GDP growth in the most vulnerable countries is slower than the advanced economies, pushing millions further into poverty and undermining efforts to build sustainable communities. It is a sobering reminder that the pursuit of sustainability cannot be separated from the pursuit of equity and inclusion. Addressing sustainability is, just, ju is not just an environmental issue. It is fundamentally about strengthening democracy and social cohesion. As the renowned economist Darren Asamoglu has argued, economic inequality and exclusion can, be based, can, be, can breed discontent and fuel populist movements, making it harder to build consensus around the long-term goals. Consider the backlash against the European Green Deal. In countries like the Netherlands, farmers have staged massive pro protests against nitrogen emission limits, arguing that such policies threaten their livelihoods and are being imposed uh, without adequate consultation. Similarly, we have seen increasing pushback against corporate ESG, environmental, social, and governance issues, uh, with over 240 anti-ESG bills introduced across the US. Many of these bills have sought to limit the integration of sustainability into business practices, arguing that it infringes on economic freedoms. The role of financial service in sustainability is pivotal. We are seeing pushback here too, Despite the rise of green finance, recent trends show that support for sustainability-linked investment is waning. In 2023, for the first time, more funds dropped ECG level labels than adopted them, as investor sentiment turned cautious against politically charged environment. To counter this trend, the financial industry must innovate and provide clearer more transparent products that align profitability with sustainability goals. Pushback is inevitable on many fronts given the pace of change needed, which is heightening the need for innovative and participatory green leadership. The global green agenda will also be influenced by the outcome of the US presidential election. The United States, as one of the world's largest economies and polluters, plays a crucial role in setting the pace for global climate action. Nobel laureate Joseph Stiglitz has long emphasized that strong US commitments to sustainability could galvanize global efforts, while a retreat could lead to a dangerous unraveling uh, of existing commitments. In Davos in 2020, he pointed to the cognitive dissonance as attendees could highlight the importance of climate change and their corporation's response to it, and yet welcome Trump's deregulation, which would allow the US to pollute even more. Biden's Inflation Reduction Act has highlighted the catalytic role of US in green leadership, with whatever questions one might have about some of the aspects of the IRA. Unfortunately, so much rests on a handful of voters in swing states that we are, all, we are all now holding our breath. In conclusion, this conference is not just an opportunity to share insights, it is a call for action. We must move beyond rhetoric and embrace bold, transformative solutions that put sustainability at the heart of every policy 
investment, and decision. Let us use this forum, forum to forge new alliances, bridge divides, and turn our collective vision of a sustainable future into reality. Thank you very much.